gosh. Hey guys, so today I'm going to make a video on stories that I have involving awkward interactions with the male specimen. See, this is already starting off very awkward. So yeah, I'm just gonna be telling awkward stories with boys. I don't know what made me decide to make this. Maybe I just wanted to degrade myself, you know, bring myself down a few steps on the social status. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna be telling weird stories that involve men. <laughs> also, if you've never known me, I've never been in a serious relationship, never had a boyfriend, like an actual boyfriend. Um, so yeah, and up until college, I didn't really have any guy friends because once I got in college, I was like, wait, you can be friends with guys? So before I had this epitome in college, like, hey, oh, you can be friends with guys. And I did have guy friends in high school, just not as many. I mean, I don't have a ton of guy friends now, but you know what I mean? Like, I just saw it differently back then. Now I'm like, whatever, whoever you are, I'll be friends with you. Before I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to be friends with a boy. So I thought I'd start off with the first awkward interaction with a guy I can remember. Actually, there's two guys that I can remember in my lifetime. This is just a quick story, but I was in either kindergarten or preschool. One of those is before elementary school. And there was these two guys that I was friends with and they're like, Erica, come under this table. And I was like, why? They were under the table. They were like, come here, come here. And they pulled down their pants and underwear so I could see their little prepubescent genitalia. <laughs> Once they're just fully exposed, they're like, do it, Erica, do it. They wanted me to also pull down my pants. And I was like, um, no, thank you. And I ran out and I told the teacher and I didn't talk to them again. So that's just like a baseline of my life. So this is now where I'm at. That's my first interaction with my guy friends. You know, come to acceptance that not every guy is gonna just flash you under a table. So there's not a lot to tell about this guy that I dated in middle school. Um, we'll call him Tony. So Tony liked me and I liked Tony and we were in math together and we like flirted and all this stuff. And so one day um, he didn't ask me out. Our mutual friend asked me out. She's like, oh, hey, Tony wants to go out with you. And I was like, okay. And she ran over to Tony and said, she said yes. And then we just like looked at each other and then I had to leave. I forgot what was happening, but I had to leave. So it already started off really good, like we couldn't even talk to each other. And so once everyone found out, they like circled around us and we're like, hug, hug, hug. You know, it's sixth grade. So we hugged and everyone was cheering and I was like, wow, you know, am I pregnant? Like that was a lot. <laughs> So we hugged, you know, starting off strong, and we dated for, like I said, a year, which is a long time, especially in sixth and seventh grade. But anyways, our relationship consisted of Skyping 24-7. That's all we did. Um, in sixth grade, you don't really have phones, so we Skyped all the time, and the closest thing, yeah, we hugged. We went to the community center, and one time he invited me over and wanted us to share a sleeping bag, but I didn't go because I have morals, okay? One time we were Skyping and I feel so bad for all my friends I had during this time because they'd come over and we'd hang out and I'd be like, oh my gosh, Tony wants to Skype. So I'd just Skype Tony and we wouldn't even talk about anything. Um, and if you go on Tony's Facebook nowadays, all he does is share posts about Farmville. So that's just kind of the guy you know, I was going for. And yeah, one time we were Skyping and his brother pulled down his pants and I saw his butt and Tony didn't really pull up the pants right away because he like wanted me to see the butt. So again, um, we went very far. I saw his butt. Like, wow. <laughs> so yeah, Tony, there wasn't much going on, um, but just to end it, so one time I was hanging out with my friend and I was explaining like, we've been dating for seven months or however long it'd been. I was like, I want to take it to the next level. I want to like kiss him. And she's like, you should. And that night he Facebook messaged me or Skype messaged me again. We didn't really have phones. Um, and he said, hey, this girl wants to go out with me, but I don't want to break up with you. So can I date both of you? The same night that I'm like, let's take it a step further with Tony. And I was like, um, no. And he's like, okay, that's fine. Um, but she continued to like come up to him and is like, I want to date you, I'm better than Erica, all this stuff. And it's like, excuse me, Tony is mine. We've been together for many months, okay? And our relationship wasn't solid for a year, like we just wouldn't talk. And then all of a sudden he'd Skype me again. And at one point I broke up with him because I'm a heartbreaker. Uh, <laughs> that's another thing, just quick side note. I've never been broken up with, again, I've never been in a relationship really, but I've never had someone like be like, I just wanna be friends or I'm not ready for this. I've always been the one to like back out and I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. So you'll notice it's a common theme where I just drop out randomly. But anyways, so yeah, I broke up with Tony and he wanted to get back together and I was like, well, maybe. And then I said no and then he moved to Las Vegas. So, I mean, I just drove him out of the state that his heartbreak was so strong that he had to leave. That's Tony, that wasn't a lot. I just thought I'd mention my first boyfriend and my only one, really, so 
Tony, hey. Nice Farmville posts you got there. So that's pretty much all I had in middle school. I had a few crushes and whatever and like small things, but nothing of significance. And then moving on to high school, I had two kind of things happened throughout the four years. I know, I'm just racking in the guys. So when I was a freshman in high school, um, I didn't know anyone in my high school. I was brand new and there's this guy in my math class. What's with me in math class? I don't understand. Um, but we'll call him Brody. So Brody and I, hit it off and we got each other's numbers, you know, like really stepping up the game. We had phones at this point. So we kind of texted and whatever and he asked me out on a date to go to this place called Screamtown. Now Screamtown is something, it's in October, it's like a scary place, like a haunted corn maze, all this stuff. And so we got to Screamtown and we made like zero contact, like when I was scared I'd just like hold myself. Like normally people bring their like girlfriends or their dates to like scary places so they can like hold them and comfort them. No, Brody would like walk behind me and I'm just like beelining it through the maze or whatever and I'm like I hate this I hate this I hate this and he didn't like come for me he was just falling behind and I'm like zooming through the maze or zooming through the haunted house and so also little fun fact I'll blur out his face but this picture we took this guy came up to us and he's like hey for five bucks I'll take your guys's picture and I was like no thanks and Brody's like let's do it and that's what I looked like so I was a real charmer I'm surprised more guys weren't you know like chasing after me anyways so Brody we were just sitting down and I was done I was done for the night I was I don't even like scary things I just agreed because it's it was Brody and I was like okay and he's like oh so we should continue to hang out and I thought that just meant in general and I was like yeah we should He's like, yeah, so, like, do your parents give you, like, curfews or anything like that? And I was like, no, they're super strict. Or, they're super not strict. And he's like, well, do you want to come over to my house? And I was like, oh, oh, you mean, you mean tonight? Okay. So I couldn't back down because I already said that I was free, that I'm down to hang out, and that my parents, um, aren't strict. So I had to go to his house, and he showed me around. His room was covered in Star Wars, like Star Wars wall decals, Star Wars sheets, Star Wars posters, Star Wars blankets, Star Wars everything. I've never seen it, so I was like, oh, nice. And then we left, and then we went into his basement. In his basement, he had model trains everywhere. Like, there was like little railroads and all these model trains, and he was telling me about it, and they like moved around the things, and I was just like, are trains even still existent? Like, I don't care but okay nice cool and so after that we decided to watch a movie and what did he put on the movie not something funny not something scary I mean I guess in his mind this is funny he put on the movie kicking and screaming with like Will Ferrell I think is in it and I was like okay and he laughed the entire time and I was just like uh-huh and then I sat a cushion away from him because I made up in my mind like I don't want to be here anymore like I decide like I'm not in it to win it I'm done with this person so I decided that I left and they text me like, hey, we should go bowling tomorrow. And I was like, sorry, um, I only have time for like my girlfriends right now. Like, I don't really want to focus on any guys. So that's what I said to him. So, okay, there's going to be four people in the store, including me. So I hope you can focus with me on all these people. Um, Drew is the guy that I'm going to be telling about. But there's two other important people in this story. So I had a friend. I don't know if she wants me to say her name, so I'm just gonna say Becky is her name. Me and Becky were like best friends, and this was junior year of high school, so this is two years after Brody. Um, Becky liked this guy. We'll call him Jay. Okay, so me and Becky were best friends, and Jay and Drew were best friends. Are their names too similar? Too bad. You're gonna just have to remember this. Jay and Drew went to our high school, but they were freshmen in college by the time we were juniors in high school, so they were two years older than us. And Becky liked Jay, so she wanted us to, like, all four hang out so she could spend time with Jay, but it's not alone because she didn't know if she liked him, all this stuff. And I knew who these guys were because, like I said, they went to my high school, but they are older, so I didn't really know them that well. Well, one day, um, Becky, me, and just Drew hung out without Jay, her crush. And Becky picked up that Drew started to like me, but I didn't realize this at this point. So she decided to have us all four hang out, kind of like a double date, but I didn't realize it was a double date. So we decided to go to like Jimmy John's, I think, um, near the college campus that they went to. And Becky tried to embarrass Drew, because Drew was kind of like the punching bag, you know, um, I guess of like high school. And so she mentioned that she went to Drew's house once and saw stains all over his sheets. Like, stains that he made to himself. I don't want to say it, but if you know what I'm talking about, those kind of stains. 
So I was like, nope, nope, nope. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. So I could just leave and leave those three to go because Drew was like, Becky, why would you say that or whatever? Because obviously she's trying to embarrass him because he likes me. So I was like, I need to go to the bathroom just because I needed to leave them. Didn't even need to pee or do anything. I just went in there so I could like not be in the conversation about the stains. So I came back and I was like, so anyways, moving on. And then we went into Jay's dorm room because like I said, the Jimmy John's was super close to their, their college. So we just hung out their dorm room. We were listening to music. We were just talking um, because the guys had actually pretty good taste in music. So Becky purposely kind of tried to orientate me and Drew to sit next to each other. And at one point she's like, like put his arm around me. And I was like not paying attention. I was on my phone and I like kind of hear her like whispering and I look up and he's like, like awkwardly going for it and I was like um what's happening and she started laughing all this stuff and then at one point she's like Jay I want to show you something and just left me and Drew in the dorm room and I'm like huh like this is so awkward and then at one point Drew asked me and Becky like hey would you guys ever have a threesome and I was like what who asks that like I don't think he intended it to mean like hey us three because Jay's right there and he's probably like fish what uh so I don't know why he mentioned that, but I just thought I'd throw that in there. He just asked that randomly. It was very clear to me that Drew liked me at this point and I realized it. I just continued to agree to hang out with all four of them because I was trying to do Becky a solid and I didn't really know who this Drew kid was. He wasn't ugly, so I was like, I mean, I guess I'll keep hanging out with them. And they're like, they were in college, they're two years older than me, so I was like, oh my gosh, they're older guys, like this is so cool. So, you know, I was a little delirious, we shall say. So then at one point we hang out again and we go to Drew's basement and we watch a movie. What movie was it? Oh, it was Goodwill Hunting. And that was my first time watching it. And the whole time, so Becky and Jay are sitting next to each other and me and Drew are sitting next to each other. <clears throat> and my hands are just like by my side. My arms are by my side, so my hands just stay here. I would see his hand kind of like get so close and then retract and then inch and like it up and it got so close but he never touched my hand I was like so then at one point I just put my hands like this because I was like listen dude if you're not gonna hold my hand can you not make it awkward so I just put my hands to myself I was like this is too much so then afterwards after the movie um his grandparents came down and were like oh hey girls how are you and all this stuff and they're like oh so you go to this high school and Becky's like yeah we're actually juniors and she's like oh you guys are juniors like realizing like we're actually two years younger than the guys his grandma was like what and Drew was like no it's fine it's fine and then they had to go talk and I was like Becky don't we're definitely mature you say we're seniors at least so then as we were leaving um Becky and Jay like hug each other and I'm out the door because I'm like this is just not for me at the moment. Drew realizes like, oh wait, they're hugging. I wanna hug Erica, but I'm out the door. So he's like, oh, uh, high five. So we high fived and then we left. Our hands did touch at one point during it. A high five. So as if those two times weren't enough torture, um, at one point, Jay and Becky were going on a date. So I was with her, we like, I did her makeup, we did all these things, and she was getting ready to go to a concert with Jay. Like I said, Jay and Drew had pretty good taste in music, so I was excited for her. I was like, oh my gosh, I never heard of this person. I believe it was John Mark, John Mark Nelson. So she's off with Jay, I'm driving home, I'm eating dinner with my family, and I get a text from Drew saying, hey, wanna go to a John Mark Nelson concert with me, Becky, and Jay? And I was like, uh-oh, this isn't a date. So I call Becky and I'm like, um, Drew just invited me to go. I don't think this is a date. I think this is another double date. And she was pissed at Drew. She's like, why are you coming? And then she didn't want him to come alone. So she's like, Erica, you have to come. So I come to the um, concert and Drew pays for me, which is nice. Hold on, before we get there, somehow it worked out that I had to carpool with Drew. And on the car ride there, it was the most awkward car ride of my life. It was barely any talking. and. And at one point, he asked me like, I was just quiet, like looking out the window. And he's like, so what are you thinking about? I was like, I don't know, nothing. And then it just continued in silence. Dude, I'm thinking about how awkward this is, but I'm not gonna tell you that. We get to this concert and um, me and Becky are like right on the stage, like our, um, like kind of arms are resting up on the stage and we're like looking up at the singers and stuff. Throughout the whole night, I can both sense it and Becky tells me that he was looking at my butt the whole time. Which, I mean, I know I got a great bod, so like, honestly, how could you not resist this? But it was just awkward because then I'd like not lean over anymore and I'm just like, ha ah, ah, don't look at me. But again, he's an older guy, so I was like, this isn't too bad. Um, so 
I have to carpool back with him. So I walk with him to his car and um, he sees John Mark Nelson walking out and he's like, John, John. And John's like, no, like, don't yell my name. But it was just so awkward. And I was like, please don't yell his name across the street. Let's just go home. And then it was the most awkward ride home. And I didn't hug him goodbye. I just like got out of the car and left. But something came over me, maybe because he was an older guy and the double dates were skewing me weird ways. But I was like, I'm going to text him like, hey, I had a really good time. Thank you for paying my ticket. Um, you know, I really like you and, you know, I have a good night, something like that. But I said I really like you in it. Which, did I really like him? Not really. But apparently, I did. So, he didn't respond for two days and I was like, this is it, this is my first rejection, I've never felt this before. But yeah, he responds two days later with like a cheesy Goodwill hunting pickup line because remember we watched that movie? I don't know what took him two days to get the balls to text me back, but it took two days, so. We were gonna go urban spelunking or something like that, um, but apparently we didn't because at that point he's like, oh, should we just go to a coffee shop and talk? And I was like, that's the most awkward first date. We go, we meet somewhere, and then we carpool there, and it's so awkward because I'm not great with eye contact, but he's very, like, looks into you the whole time you make eye contact, so he's looking at me the entire, like, two hours we're on this coffee date, and I made up an excuse. I was like, oh, sorry, I have dinner with my family. I didn't. I got home, and I was home alone. I was just chilling. I don't remember how, but somehow our, my, our emails came into the conversation. This is how interesting the conversation is. We're talking about our email. Somehow, I don't even know, but I mentioned that my first email was... I'm not gonna say it, but it had the word zebra in it. And he's like, oh, so are zebras your favorite animal? And I'm like, no. And he's like, so why'd you have zebra in your email? And I was like, I don't know, I was like 10. And he's like, oh, well, you must have put zebras. Like kept asking me about the stupid zebra and I was like, dude, I'm so over this. But I kept talking to him because I didn't know, like I, I had no escape plan, he drove me there. Um, But it was soups awkward, but I think we hugged goodbye because I was trying to be nice. Um, and then I drove home and he kept texting me and I just didn't really respond. He'd ask me to hang out and be like, no, I'm busy and I wouldn't text as much and then it just slowly faded to nothing. But then I went to the Broods concert with Hannah and I saw him there because like I said, he doesn't have bad taste in music and it was super awkward because he got super close to me and he was asking me and he's like, oh, oh, you're going into college? Um, and I was like, yeah, I am and I'm going to Colorado and all this stuff and I was like, goodbye, sir. So that was the last of Drew. So I don't know if this video was necessarily entertaining. I hope so. Someday I might make a video on like college stories and stuff like that. And I know a bunch of my friends, they found out that I have a, a YouTube channel. So if you're watching this, hello. Uh, but yeah, those are some of my many awkward interactions I've had with the male species. Why do I say that? With, with men, with boys, with guys. So yeah, hopefully this video is entertaining, and um, if you also have weird, awkward interactions with people that you find kind of relatively attractive, you're not alone. So yeah, those are my stories. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.